Hello, my name is Edward Cozier. I'm the Managing Director of Nextech and Nextloop. And my talk today is on closing the loop on food grade polypropylene packaging. Nextech is a company that is focused on the recycling of post-consumer packaging. We've been doing this for over 17 years. And we develop unique solutions for barriers to the recycling of, of packaging. And we also design recycling factories to allow materials to be made to be used back into the circular economy. This talk is about the recycling of polypropylene, which has been one of the major polymers used throughout the plastics industry. It's being made at the at the rate of about 60 million tonnes per annum. It's approximately 20% of the global production of plastics. And in Europe, we use 10 million tonnes of polypropylene for a wide range of applications due to its very high stiffness to weight ratio, uh, its toughness, its insolubility, its moldability, the capacity to make fibres, sheet, injection moulded items, and many other materials. So highly versatile, widely used, yet right now it's not widely recycled. And of course that means that the lack of recycled material will inhibit the use of uh, recycled polypropylene back into packaging materials. And in Europe we have a charge being applied to packaging without 30% recycled content, and that's 800 euros per tonne. In Britain, by next April 19, uh, in 2022, it will be 200 pounds per tonne. And these taxes and charges are there to encourage the use of recycled content back into new materials. And in Europe, the 4 million tonnes that's used in packaging would generate a demand of 1.2 million tonnes per year. And at the moment, uh, there is no food grade recycled polypropylene. And this is why we have developed the Next Loop project to address this gap. And as you know, brand owners globally have been making commitments to reach recycled content targets. Typically, these targets are 25% recycled content by 2025 and in some cases the recycled content is going to go to 50 or even to a hundred percent and of course the retailers that are putting packaging into the hands of consumers are also feeling the pressure and the need to adopt recycled content in packaging supermarkets like marks and spencers co-op have already made very clear and strong commitments to use recycled content in their packaging. Tesco also recognised the view that uh, food grade pack PP materials would be welcome to address uh, their initiatives. Morrisons and Iceland also see recycled polypropylene as a key step forward in the inclusion of material back into packaging. And the key here is the contact with food. Recycling of PP happens right now, but back to lower value or downcycled applications. And food packaging is much more demanding, and this has been the gap. We started the Next Loop project, and we now have 30 companies that are involved in the project, and they cover the full supply chain from the recycling of material to the conversion of resin into packaging formats to the supplies of technology involved in the recycling process and also industry associations and government organisations like RAP UK and um, groups like um, OPRL who are involved in the definition of the uh, recycling logos. We have uh, label companies and ink companies who, will involve, who are involved in the supply of part of the technology. So, and also universities to um, conduct further research. So the 
Next Loop initiative is based on two technology platforms. The first one is a sorting technology, which is called Polyprism, and the other one is a decontamination technology called Pristine. And these two platforms have been developed by eight years of intense research in order to make these systems plug and play ready. And they are now ready for use. And we have designed both platforms to be usable with the current infrastructure that's available to the recycling sector uh, in United Kingdom and Europe. Polyprism is the sorting technology which is based on the use of markers that fluoresce under ultraviolet light. This is a very simple step. We have a library of markers that can be used to tag a bottle or a package so that it can be identified uniquely. This allows us to select and sort the material and so we can segregate food from non-food or we can use other categories such as bio-based plastics or black plastics and many other things. But our focus for polypropylene will be separating food from non-food. And we can achieve 95% purity in one step, nine, greater than 99% purity in two steps at very high speeds, three meters per second at loading rates of two tons per hour per meter with the belt. So polyprism is the separation technology. And we have a short video to, to show you this at work. In this video, you'll see two types of bottles that have fluorescent marker sleeves on them. They look like conventional bottles in under normal daylight, so the markers are invisible. But here we've mixed them with many other plastics. Under ultraviolet light, the marked bottles fluoresce. The cameras that are used in the sorting system can see the fluorescence and they are ejected. And as you can see in this video, the separation is very complete. As we've said, greater than 95% selectivity in each step, which means that we can gain very high separation of one type of material to another. And we have shown that this technology can be applied to existing recycling installations, such as the one we've got shown here, where we're able to fit the ultraviolet light source and the hardware Sorry, and the software to the to the sorting system in under an hour and then successfully sort fluorescent marker based materials uh, on the system. So the marker technology is plug and play ready to go. And we don't have to install new equipment, but we have to simply upgrade those units to the new system. On the decontamination technology, we've got uh, our next loop pristine system and this slide shows the decontamination efficiency on the basis of what's called a challenge test and this in this challenge test we apply a number of surrogate chemicals to the propylene and we look to see whether we can extract those materials by the recycling process so we've actually used in this case six chemicals and they are meant to represent the whole spectrum of chemicals that might be able to be found in the consumer's home or if they happen to be used in a package. So we have low molecular weight, high molecular weight, polar and non-polar molecules of various types. And in this particular uh, table, you can see that the removal rates, the decontamination rate here is of the order of 100% uh, going to 95% depending on the molecular weight. Those very high decontamination rates coupled with the high initial concentrations can be used to predict whether we can actually decontaminate this to food grade conditions. And indeed, we have done the testing uh, looking at migration of um, these surrogate chemicals uh, into food simulants and we've shown that um, the materials are not extracted at all or they're below the level of detection. And that means that we have confidence that this material meets 
food grade requirements uh, as specified by EFSA. And the experimental results have been inspected by and validated by Steptoe and Johnson, uh, who specialize in food grade regulations. And this gives us the confidence that this process will be able to create a new stream of food grade recycled polypropylene provided the correct pretreatment and sorting is carried out to, to uh, provide the input materials. The next loop project uh, will deliver a series of milestones along the supply chain. So besides developing the recycling infrastructure for polypropylene food grade materials, it will also establish the certification that will give brand owners, consumers and recyclers the confidence that the process is fit for purpose and the materials are indeed food grade. And it will enhance the current uh, recycling programs of recyclers and produce greater returns for them. It will also develop specific grades of materials for film, sheet, thermoforming, blow molding and injection molding. And we will also develop a series of design guidelines for food grade recycling so that brand owners, retailers and converters can produce materials that keep on enhancing the quality of recycled materials as they go through multiple loops. The next loop program is designed to benefit the businesses that are making and recycling packaging in in United Kingdom and in Europe. The innovation will help companies meet their recycling targets and it will help keep uh, packaging costs low by avoiding the, the charges that would otherwise be applied if they had no recycled content. And very importantly, the recycling of polypropylene will reduce the carbon footprint of the packaging that's being produced for each tonne recycled, at least one tonne of CO2 will be saved compared to using virgin resin. And this is compared against landfill as a destination. And the savings are approximately two tonnes of CO2 equivalent if the material is destined to go to waste to energy. Next loop recycle PP is meant to be a direct replacement for virgin PP. And this will help companies uh, produce materials and make products uh, that will be able to be used as a drop-in replacement. So making the whole process relatively simple and straightforward. Just to highlight some of the um, areas of progress in um, the next loop project, the first plant will be built by Viridor in the United Kingdom and the capacity will be of the order of seven to 10,000 tonnes per annum and it's expected to be delivering material by the end of 2022, next year. The grades of material that will be made will be a natural white combination, uh, which we can often call ivory, and also a grey made from the multicoloured materials. And these will be available as 100% recycled content materials. And in addition, we will develop hybrid grades that will be mixed with virgin polypropylene for special technical performance applications such as thin wall injection moulding or perhaps some sheet extrusion or areas where we need high rigidity. Um, the grades, as I've mentioned, are suited for injection moulding and extrusion because these are the main conversion techniques. And the recommended addition rate would be of the order of, of between 25 and 50 percent, uh, even though 100 percent is possible. And the reason why we're recommending the lower addition rates are purely so that more products can actually be tested and um, produced with recycled content rather than focusing on a smaller number of products. There is a new development that uh, the Next Loop program will undertake as well, and it's to produce inert grade polypropylene, which is 
a, a new grade of material which will be applicable to many cosmetic applications and it will provide a, a very economic uh, material which will be very well suited to non-migratory conditions needed for cosmetics. The Nextloop program will provide a lot of opportunities for the businesses that are participating and they will be able to have supplies of food grade recycled polypropylene for their internal testing. Now that will mean processing, the evaluation of mechanical properties and organoleptic properties and migration performance. All of these steps are needed to make sure that every end market can be met by food grade recycled polypropylene. And this is an important part of the whole program so that everyone can actually have confidence from beginning to end that recycled polypropylene is viable for those particular areas of market. Uh, companies can also come to Nextloop to become a licensee so they can actually manufacture these materials. We, we already have um, one confirmed and one more in the in process of negotiation and we are getting um, inquiries about other areas. So we welcome uh, this activity. Also in the next loop project we know that the companies participating will be the first to bring their products to the market with recycled content making them um, product leaders in this area. There is ongoing demand for this this material. Here are the materials that we're working on. Um, you can see on the left the, the bales of post-consumer rigid packaging that are being um, sorted in this particular case, uh, uh, audited for their characteristics. And on the right hand side we can see the packaging made from uh, food grade recycled material. And of course the various colours that are, will be made will be matched with the appropriate end, end market applications. So the next loop program is one that is ready to deliver food grade recycled PP to the packaging industry. And even though this is a pioneering activity, we're confident that it will be the start of closing the loop on recycled polypropylene making this material part of the circular economy. And our, our direction is that all of these packages would be 100% recyclable and 100% recycled. So thank you for listening to my talk and uh, we welcome inquiries about Next Loop and uh, we welcome the opportunity to work with you in closing the loop on food grade recycled polypropylene. Thank you very much.